Hey, how you doing, Chris? Uh, this is the Ohm Ducker. I'm going to show you how to uh, hook up your motor here. Uh, this is a three phase motor. We're going to go ahead and pretend that this is the wires that are going to go to your electrical outlets that you want to run the three phase on. This will uh, represent the uh, wires that are on the output side of the box. We're going to go ahead and start with our uh, white wire that we designated your generating leg. We're going to go ahead and couple that with the white wire that's going to go to your wall plugs to run your lathe or whatever uh, items you want to run. We're going to take our uh, two green wires and we'll splice those two together. We're going to take our two black wires. We're going to splice those two together. We're going to take our two red wires. We're going to splice those two together. Now this is uh, more or less the uh, three-phase circuit here. Now we're going to add the pony motor to this circuit. We're going to take our ground wire, go ahead and hook up our ground wire. We're going to put a wire nut. So all three of these green wires are hooked up together. We're going to take, uh, doesn't really matter how you do um, this particular part of it. You can uh, do it in any order that you want. The pony motor is not critical as far as uh, uh, which way it rotates, it'll produce the same power forward and backwards. Okay, just so you know, uh, wires uh, T4, T5, and T6, they are wire nutted together. You do nothing else with these leads. I'm just going to lay those to the side. So we got uh, 8 and 2. I'm just going to arbitrarily put 8 and 2 on black. Like I said, it doesn't matter as long as all three are connected. So eight and two is going to black with the wire nut on it. <clears throat> three and nine, we're gonna go ahead and make red. And we're gonna wire nut that together with the two red leads that we already screwed together. Now we're gonna add three and nine and to uh, complete our setup here we're gonna take wires number seven and one and we are gonna connect it to our generated leg now you want to do this with uh, no incoming power hooked up to the box obviously and you'll be okay. You don't have to, have to worry about getting shocked at all. Okay, and uh, that's basically how this motor gets wired up. You got two blacks with eight and two. You got two whites with three. Oh, excuse me, uh, one and seven. You got red with three and uh, two reds with three and nine. Now, uh, after that, you can hook up your single phase to the uh, it'd be the left hand side of your box and uh, white would go on white or excuse me uh, green's gonna go on green uh, white's gonna go on white black's gonna go on black for the input of this um, I don't have an actual box so I can't start the motor to show you exactly what it looks like when it starts but uh, your wiring will be exactly like this now at this point if you wanted to um, you know, you could tape it or you could actually put a disconnect right here. Um, a contactor, um, a, um, a knife switch, uh, anything that you wanted, uh, maybe even a drum switch if you wanted to. Um, you could uh, more or less isolate this motor from the circuit if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to run just like this, the motor will run exactly like this without problems. Um, you know, uh, it's pretty much up to you how you feel like terminating it. Um, you know, uh, the, the wire nuts are putting it into contact just like anything else. Uh, I like to run twist lock plugs, but that's my personal preference. Uh, 
uh, it's completely up to you how you want to do the rest of it, but um, that's basically how this uh, uh, operation is in a nutshell. Um, feel free, you know what I mean, PM me if uh, you need uh, further questions answered, but uh, it's pretty straightforward and basic. Um, you should be able to do it, no problems, but if you do, here to help. We're on, Chris.